This is a CBS 4 News special report. We continue to follow breaking news out of Doral, where two Doral police officers have been shot. We are getting new information from a senior law enforcement source. We have been able to confirm that one Doral police officer was shot in the arm, the second on the face, possibly from flying shrapnel. Now, this is happening in the area of Northwest 25th Street and 90. Fourth Avenue. This is near the Miami Dade Police Headquarters. There is a massive, massive police presence in that area. We've also been told from the senior law enforcement officer the suspect is dead, shot by officers returning fire. Apparently, uh, we've been told this all stems from a road rage incident. Two of the officers responded, and that's when the shooting ensued. Again, we have been able to confirm from a senior law enforcement officer one Doral police officer was shot in the arm. The second was injured in the face, possibly from flying shrapnel. This all stems from a road rage incident. Again, that suspect is dead, shot by officers returning fire. Chopper 4 live over the scene here in Doral right now. And we also have Peter Dench, who is on the ground on the scene with more information. He's on the phone with us. Peter. Well, Maribel, we can tell you that this is one big massive traffic jam. We've been all around Doral. Uh, this happened in the area of Northwest 24th Street, 92nd Avenue. That is not far from Miami-Dade Police Headquarters. Now, we were at Northwest 97th Avenue and 25th Street for a while. That was as close as we could get. We're now moving to a situation, a scene that is closer. But as uh, traffic is shut down right now on uh, Northwest 25th Street between 87th 97th Avenue. Again, this is a massive problem because of the amount of truck traffic here. The Florida Highway Patrol and Sweetwater Police have been called in to assist Miami-Dade Police uh, as they deal with this massive traffic problem. We also noticed uh, driving in the 33rd Street uh, was also shut down to traffic between 97th and 87th Avenue. So that's also blocked as well. So getting around to Rao is a real challenge at this point. Again, I know you reported it, but it bears repeating. Um, the officers apparently do not have life-threatening injuries. One officer uh, was shot in the arm, both from Doral PD, another with injuries to the face, possibly from pieces of shrapnel. And then, as you mentioned, Maribel, this uh, source says this stemmed from a road rage incident. A suspect is dead at the scene, shot uh, by police as a result of uh, uh, what happened there. So, again, getting around Doral is really, really tricky. Uh, it, is, it is one big traffic jam. We are making slow progress right now. We're actually heading northbound on 87th Avenue as we speak in traffic at Northwest uh, 14th uh, Street. And we'll be hanging a left on the 25th Street, hopefully to get mm -hmm. closer to the scene. Again, the scene happening right next to Miami-Dade Police Headquarters. Maribel? Yeah, Peter. Um, ironically, as you mentioned, it happened right across from the Miami-Dade Police Headquarters. But for those who are familiar with Doral on any given day, there is massive amounts of traffic. As you mentioned, the, the trucks and the traffic getting around Northwest 25th Street. We also have 87th Avenue, 90, 97th Avenue. Um, tell us, are all the streets blocked off? They're diverting traffic. What's going on for people who are maybe heading to the area or need to get around that area? What's the best advice you can give them at this point? Well, definitely to find alternative routes from the south, you can try Northwest 12th Street. Uh, but once you get up to 25th Street, um, you're simply not allowed to go westbound on uh, uh, 25th Street at 87th Avenue. The same goes for 33rd Street. So that, imagine this, just imagine this perimeter. It's uh, Northwest 33rd Street in the north from 97th to 87th Avenue, down to the south perimeter from uh, 87th and 97th Avenue on 25th Street. Another another police involved shooting just a few days ago. We were covering the, the shooting of Hollywood police officer uh, Chirino, who unfortunately passed away uh, from his injuries. So we're hearing about another police shooting. Our heart just simply stopped. And um, unfortunately, it's happened again. At this point, the suspect is dead. Um, we have been able to confirm that he was shot by the officers returning fire. So again, let's talk about the, the two Doral police officers that were injured. So 
One of them, we're told, was shot in the arm, the other in the face, possibly by flying shrapnel. They were transported, Peter, to area hospitals nearby. Do you know exactly which hospitals? Um, do we know anything more about their condition? We know that it's not life-threatening. Yeah, we were initially hearing, these are unconfirmed mm -hmm. reports, one taken to nearby uh, JMH West, which is in Doral, uh, and the other one, uh, the more serious injury, taken to the Ryder Trauma Center at Jackson Memorial Hospital, and that's what we're hearing initially. And Peter, also, you were on the scene just a few minutes ago when it was complete chaos. There was a massive police presence right now. Um, also, we want to point out on the screen, you're taking a live look right now at a transport uh, you have an ambulance right there on the, I believe that is the 836. It looks like the 836 possibly heading to JMH uh, West, the new uh, Jackson Hospital that was built right off of, right off the Palmetto from what I'm making or to the main hospital right now. But that is uh, one transport that we believe left from the scene here in Doral. Again, we have been able to confirm by a senior law enforcement source that two Doral officers were shot in the area of Northwest 25th Street and 94th Avenue. This is right across the street from Miami-Dade Police Headquarters. One of them was shot in the arm, the other in the face, possibly by flying shrapnel. This is coming from a senior law enforcement source. Neither received life-threatening injuries. However, they are being transported to the hospital. We can also tell you that the suspect is dead, shot by officers returning fire. Uh, Peter Dench is on the ground right now. He is trying to make his way around to speak with public information officer from Miami-Dade Police or from Doral Police at this point. Um, we don't know exactly who's going to be taking over this investigation. But Peter, Sweetwater Police, Doral Police, tell us about the amount of police officers and all the different agencies that were on the scene when you first arrived, which was maybe 20 minutes after it happened. Right, sirens every, everywhere, Maribel, and uh, dozens of Miami-Dade police cars, Florida Highway Patrol zipping by, Sweetwater Police called in to help with containing traffic. Mm -hmm. Also, we're seeing a lot of presence, very high presence uh, to be expected of Doral Police. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, just, just, just a massive, massive presence of dozens of police officers and, and cruisers here at the scene, and, and again involving uh, at least uh, four agencies that we can mm -hmm. see: Army Day Police, Sweetwater, Doral, um, Florida Highway Patrol. And Peter, let me ask you something. Um, so we have been able to confirm that this all stems from a road rage incident. The shooting happened on Northwest 25th Street and around 94th Avenue. Do we know if it began there or there was another scene and that's where it ended up? Have you been able to hear anything about no, that? I'm, I've not been able to get any more details. Mm -hmm. um, other than, you know, we were receiving some initial reports that a couple of vehicles uh, were involved. But uh, no other specific details of what, what motivated, what prompted this incident, uh, mm -hmm. how it started, uh, whether there was a road rage incident right here on Northwest 25th Street. Um, and again, if that was happening right there, that would be right literally almost in front uh, or right next to the Miami Day Police Headquarters. Yeah, it was a massive scene. We're taking a live look right now at uh, one of the scenes there in Doral on Northwest 25th Street. I believe this is across from Miami-Dade Police Headquarters. I've just been able to confirm. So again, you have uh, just a massive presence. Uh, several agencies are out there right now. Again, if you're just joining us, we are following breaking news. This is out of Doral, where we have been able to confirm two Doral police officers have been shot, stemming from a road rage incident. One of the officers was shot in the arm. The other was shot in the face, possibly by flying shrapnel. Northwest 25th Street and 94th Avenue. We have been told the suspect is dead, shot by officers returning fire. All of those familiar with Doral, you know that there is a lot of traffic any hour of the day, and now it is 12.08. They are blocked. They have blocked off Northwest 25th Street, possibly from 87th Avenue to 94th. We're taking a live look right now, Chopper 4 over uh, transport. We believe this is to Ryder Trauma Center. They are just arriving there on the scene right now, also being escorted by a police officer. Again, two Doral police officers are shot in Doral, Northwest 25th Street and 94th Avenue. Peter, you're still there hey, with Maribel. us? Yes. 
So, Peter, tell, tell us where you are right now. I know you've been stuck in traffic for, for quite some time, trying to make your way to where are you planning to go to Doral headquarters, um, uh, Doral police? Well, there's a lot of confusion. Mm -hmm. In actual fact, uh, we were told to go to a thinking area in one place, but then police are directing us to another place. Okay. Initially, we heard it was 25th Street. Now we're being told 33rd Street. Then we're being told to go back to 25th Street. So mm -hmm. um, confusion is part of this, too, in terms of where we should go. And uh, that's one of, one of the, uh, the issues we're facing beyond traffic being backed up in this area. Area is certainly a good idea to stay away from at this point. Okay, so we are taking a live look right now at the transport. I would like to speak with my producer because we're looking at these live pictures right now and we have several scenes right now. Do I believe this is AMI Kendall or Ryder Trauma Center? I mean, somebody can answer. Okay, Ryder Trauma Center. We believe, we believe that it's Ryder. However, we can confirm right now from Chopper 4, he zoomed in right now. But they are, right now, they just brought out. Possibly the, the police officer, again, we, we cannot confirm if that indeed was one of the police officers that was injured. But we want to take you back out live to the scene here on Northwest 25th Street and 94th Avenue. There you see um, Zabaleta. He is one of the public information officers for Miami-Dade Police Headquarters. So we're still waiting to see exactly who will be speaking, whether it will be Miami-Dade Police or whether it will be Doral. Seems like he, maybe he's coming towards the camera, towards where the media is, giving us some information as to uh, what's going to happen at this point. Again, this is all very fluid. We're just getting all this information right now as we speak. Again, this happened at around 11, 11, less than an hour ago this happened. We also have Jim DeFiti on the line with him. Jim? Hello. Jim, you're with us? I'm here, Maribel. Hey, Jim, so uh, tell us what your sources are, are telling you about what happened. So I think it's always important in, in instances like this to know that these are very preliminary, mm -hmm. that things are fluid and that they will change. But as you've been reporting, as I've as I provided, you know, a senior law enforcement source tells me that this stemmed from a road rage incident, possibly in the Sweetwater area that culminated in the shooting that we're dealing with now. I think I think again we have to be careful and mm -hmm. differentiate. Certainly one officer was shot in the arm. The second officer, it's not clear if he was shot in the face or more than likely simply some of the bullets may have hit his vehicle or something else and and a little piece of debris would have would have hit him in the struck him in the face both officers are expected to recover these are non-life-threatening injuries but in the melee that ensued the officers returned fire and did in fact kill the suspect uh, who shot them so uh, that's that's essentially what we know right now you know as we know this uh, road rage has been an ongoing issue in South Florida. We've seen these types of incidents before where, you know, folks on I-95 or on the Palmetto, you know, start firing guns at each other. We're not clear yet as to whether or not these officers stumbled upon a road rage incident or if they were being called out to the scene of a road rage incident. That's still being sorted out. And it's so unfortunate, Jim. Just a few days ago, we've been reporting on um, Officer Chirino from Hollywood, who was shot, fatally shot, killed in the line of duty. And less than an hour ago, we hear two other police officers who were also shot. So our hearts just, just stopped and saying, this, this can't be happening again. Well, and, and it also goes to show that there's no such thing as a routine police call. In the case at Hollywood, you're going out trying to find a kid on a bicycle who may be breaking into cars, and, and that ends up with an officer being killed. You know, somebody angry in traffic or some incident, uh, you know, taking place between vehicles, that ends up being a, 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 you know, a deadly encounter, at least for the person who tried to shoot at officers. Yeah, absolutely. It's just, just horrible. Um, thankfully, in this case, the two Dura police officers, we know for sure one was shot in the arm. The other, we don't know if he was shot or possibly injured in the face by possibly flying shrapnel. Jim, stay with us for just a moment because the traffic in Doral is just chaos. We want to go to Michael Soler for more on that. Hey, Michael, what does the traffic look like?
That's right, you know this is a pretty busy area in Doral. We're just to the west of MIA here, Northwest 25th Street. That shooting occurred at 92nd Avenue. The road is shut down right now between 97th and about 82nd Avenue. There's a flyover ramp coming from MIA. That ramp is also blocked. Drivers are being detoured down 82nd Avenue. Closures are continually being updated here. It looks like traffic along Galloway also being blocked off there at 25th Street. Your best workarounds are going to include Northwest 36th Street, Northwest 12th Street instead. Maribel, back to you. All right, Michael, basically the best advice is just stay away from Doral if you can. So, Jim, we want to get back to you. Uh, for those who are just joining us, we want to give a little recap as to what's happening, what we're seeing right now. These are live pictures out of Doral, Northwest 25th Street and about 94th Avenue. As I say, iron ironically, this happened literally across the street from Miami-Dade Police Headquarters. Uh, no, exactly right. Uh, you know, and again, as you said, just to recap, you know, one officer shot in the arm, the second officer injured in the face, possibly by flying debris, flying shrapnel. The suspect in the case it has been shot and killed at the scene by the officers. Both officers are expected to fully recover. Again, this stems from a potential road rage incident. That's what the preliminary reports have said. And I'm going to keep repeating that, you know, in the first few minutes, even the first half hour, hour of an incident like this, what you learn at this point can evolve and slowly change as more information comes in. But this is what we know as of right now. And as you said, Maribel, thankfully, both officers are expected to survive. Yeah, thankfully, the suspect um, you mentioned shot dead by police returning fire. Um, we want to see, Jim, stay with us a minute. We want to see if we can check back in. Peter Dench, no, he's, we had him just a few minutes ago. He's actually trying to get around here. So, um, again, Jim, as we mentioned, this is all very fluid. We're getting information through different sources because these are Doral police officers. However, the shooting happened across Miami-Dade Police Headquarters. Um, and we also had Sweetwater. So at this point, we're still trying to figure out exactly which agency. This is a video right now of the transport that we have of one of the officers Right now, we're, we're, we're trying no, I, to, exactly. yeah. That's the transport right what now. What I was going to say, Maribel, is, yeah. What I was going to say, Maribel, is you're right. This is probably cuts across many different agencies. One of the first things that they're going to have to try to figure out is is which officers discharge their firearms in the course of this. Uh, it's standard procedure. They'll probably be relieved of duty at least momentarily, you know. And ultimately, this case will be investigated by the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, which comes in to investigate officer-involved shootings. That way, that you bring in an outside agency to conduct the review, uh, and that's what will likely happen here. Now, those reviews can take a long time. I mean, they can take months, if mm -hmm. not years sometimes, to go through the process of, of determining exactly what happened here. But, you know, this at what we know now, this seems fairly straightforward. Obviously, the real question is going to be, what prompted this incident? Right. It was this, if this truly was a road rage incident, what was it about? You know, was it, was it the suspect, you know, getting into an incident with the officers or was it between two other cars and the officers came upon it or were called out to it? That is what we don't know. That is what detectives are initially trying to do. And I will tell you, I'm almost certain that Florida Department of Law Enforcement investigators are probably already on the scene if they are not on their way by now to check into this. Oh, for sure. And you, you mentioned that your source told you that this all started in Sweetwater and ended here. Do you know or have you heard if both Dural police officers are, were together in the same cruiser or if one called for backup and, and they were pursuing the this, this, this suspect? Do we know more about that? I, I don't, Maribel. Mm -hmm. This is all. These are all good questions that are trying to that will be sorted out. You know, again, I'm not even certain that it began in Sweetwater, okay. but somewhere in the Sweetwater vicinity and worked its way into Doral. Yeah, it could be Sweetwater. It's very close to that area as well. So, Peter, again, it is now 12:17. This happened um, about an hour ago. And uh, we're still getting very limited information, but what we can tell our viewers who are just joining us, this uh, two Dural police officers were injured. 
One of them was shot in the arm. The other, was in, his face was injured, possibly by flying shrapnel. And uh, neither received uh, life-threatening injuries. However, they were both transported to the hospitals. We're not exactly sure what hospitals they were transported to, but we did see the transport. Um, also, this all stems from a road rage incident. Uh, the suspect has been shot dead by officers returning fire. Joining us on the phone, Jim DeFiti has been for, for quite some time now with information from his sources. He actually got this information for us. So, Jim, uh, let, let's recap again. Again, we hear the shooting of a police officer happening way too often. No, absolutely right. Like, you know, look, being a police officer is a dangerous job. Oftentimes, they get taken for granted. We, we often direct a lot of our, our anger about societal issues at police officers. But the job they do is critically important. They put themselves in, in harm's way. This is one of those examples of that. You know, we often in the media, too often sometimes, focus on the worst elements of policing. This is is one of those incidents where we see the other side, the fact that, you know, when uh, when you say goodbye to your loved ones in the morning and, and leave for work as a police officer, you know, the fear of your family is, are you going to return home safely? And, you know, for the officer in Hollywood, that did not occur. For these officers, it appears that they will be will be going home to their families, that their injuries are non-life threatening. But it's always important to keep in mind. We ask a lot of police officers, as I said, you know, and we require a lot and we invest in police officers a great deal of power and responsibility so they should be held to a higher standard the best police officers want to be held to a higher standard but what we see now is the other side of the coin where where you know you have officers who who risk their lives and and to stop something that may have grown worse i mean you know we've seen too many road rage incidents that end it with a lot of uh, a lot of casualties a lot of a lot of problems and if this is the way this one had to end better for it to end here and now the way it did than with anyone else getting hurt absolutely and as, as you mentioned earlier when police officers respond to a call they don't know what to expect when they get there uh, absolutely right no call mm -hmm. there's no such thing as a routine call as a police officer Jim, stay with us. Uh, we want to speak now with Peter Dench. He is on the ground near the scene. Uh, Peter, you're there with us? That's right, Maribel. Can you hear me okay? I hear you and I see you. Clearly. Okay, Tell good. us where you well, are. We're live on Northwest 25th Street. Yeah, well, we moved to a new location just east of Miami Dade Police Headquarters, uh, Northwest 25th Street. We've now heard from Miami Dade Police spokesman Detective Alvaro Zavaleta that Doral Police are taking over uh, this investigation and will be speaking. We're expecting uh, Doral Police spokesman Ray Valdez uh, here shortly to give us the latest from Doral Police uh, standpoint at this point. But as you can see, uh, Joaquin, if we can uh, pan over to our left, uh, they're setting up Miami Dade Police uh, spokesman here on Northwest 25th Street. Uh, and they told us that uh, Doral Police spokesman is, is on its way to update us on what he knows. Uh, well, we've gotten a big head start thanks to some information from our Jim DeFiti in terms of what we know about this case. So, again, uh, traffic is even further blocked off. We were hearing that maybe as far east as Northwest 82nd Avenue and 25th Street all the way to Northwest 97th Avenue. So that's where we are. We're live at the scene awaiting an update from Doral Police spokesman Ray Valdez, who we were told is headed to the scene. Again, Miami-Dade Police telling us totally this is their case, and they will not be giving us any specific details, even though this coincidentally happened right next to Miami-Dade Police Headquarters. Maribel? Peter, and you arrived on the scene minutes after it happened. It was chaos, a massive police presence. Talk to us about what you saw, the different agencies, all the different police departments that were there on hand. Well, chaos is a good way to describe it. We arrived with sirens going everywhere, flashing lights, and dozens of Miami-Dade police cars swarming into the area that we initially went to on Northwest 25th Street at 97th Avenue, helping out because there's a crush of truck traffic, as you know, in this very, very busy area. Helping out were a number of other agencies, including Sweetwater Police, the Florida Highway Patrol, and, of course, Doral Police are all over this scene. But 
Uh, we've had some difficult weaving our way around mm -hmm. in and out, but it, it is doable, not advisable for the average driver to try and yeah. do this. We know some of the shortcuts and how to get there, but uh, so, and, and, and some of this traffic confusion has subsided a bit as they're focusing uh, more of this on specific areas. Tell us about you navigating to try to get to that area where you are right now, which is literally two blocks from where you were initially. Well, yeah, exactly. In these situations, you almost have to listen to yourself, your inner instincts, because we were being told to go mm -hmm. uh, the wrong directions. We realized we couldn't get Mirabel uh, eastbound on 25th Street, so we took a circuitous route, went, went south, way down to 12th Street, and then we weaved our way in and out of streets, back into the main road here in Doral, 87th Avenue, went back up north just north of 25th Street, and we took another route to come back in through some back roads and finally found ourselves at this location here uh, at 94th Court and 25th Street, and that's where we are at this point. But it took some mm -hmm. weaving to get in and out yeah. of these streets and made some very, very heavy traffic. And, Peter, just out of curiosity, so we know the suspect um, is dead. He was shot by officers returning fire. So that's, that's one scene, but have you heard as to why they have so many streets blocked off if the suspect is already dead? Is there a possibility that they're looking for a second suspect, another vehicle? Have you heard anything about that? Because it's a very, very large perimeter. Well, that's a good question, and you know we've we've not heard anything about the search for any other mm -hmm. suspect uh, at at this point. It may just just be that one person, but you know as a precaution on these situations, they tend to um, <clears throat> be conservative and seal off further areas uh, than we need to uh, because of the possibility of that happening, the possibility that uh, anything else could be happening. So in order to protect the public and to keep the public away mm -hmm. from any, any situation, they do that. Also, not to mention uh, the speed at which some of these police cars mm -hmm. are racing to the scene, not knowing if any other uh, persons or officers have been injured, and there's a sense of immediacy getting there. So to avoid taking any chances, they Typically, police do uh, tend to seal off a much larger area than they need to just as a precaution. Uh, I've seen situations where they've had huge perimeters if they mm -hmm. think any suspects, gunmen are at large, um, and, uh, because they just mm -hmm. can't risk anything else happening beyond what they're trying to contain at this point. Absolutely, for the public safety. I'm looking around here because... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, no, go yeah. ahead. Well, Maribel, I'm looking around because let's take another shot at uh, uh, the uh, podium over there as a number of crews are here waiting for uh, uh, Doral Police folks and Ray Valdez who are told to uh, uh, give us the latest statement. In fact, I think I see Ray on the scene over there mm -hmm. huddling up with Miami-Dade Police, but that's what we're waiting on. Um, Again, I'm not okay. so sure how much more we'll know, but looks like Ray's about to start this. So uh, I'd like to break away and listen if I can do that right now. Okay, let's. Uh, it seems like they're they're giving us the heads up that they will be speaking. So again, Doral Police will be the ones that will be giving us all the information. Peter, is that correct? There's Peter. Let's listen in now. You have Doral Police as well as Miami Dade Police. And I am the public information officer for the Doral Police Department. Uh, in a summary, uh, what happened here today at approximately 11:10, there was an incident uh, that occurred off-site nearby. Uh, it resulted uh, with some type of dispute, and it resulted uh, in one man chasing another man. Uh, and vehicle by vehicle. Uh, our officers were alerted of the incident that had occurred and were in the area. Uh, and they came upon a traffic accident where a vehicle had struck a tree, spun out of control. Uh, as that officer is observing this, the subject in that car jumped out of his car and opened fire. Uh, he struck the officer's vehicle several times. Uh, the officer and other officers that were in the, uh, in the vicinity opened fire. Uh, they struck the subject. The subject has been pronounced dead. A firearm was recovered. I can tell you that our officers, uh, one received a gunshot wound uh, to the chest, the leg, and the arm. Fortunately, he was wearing a bulletproof vest. 
the bulletproof vest stuffed around. Uh, he was initially transported to Jackson West. The doctors there assessed his injuries and decided as a precaution to transfer him to Rider Trauma. The second officer received a graze to the left cheek, either from glass or shrapnel. Uh, he was fine. He was uh, transported to Kendall Region. Uh, that's pretty much all I have for now. Do you know what prompted this incident, Ray? What what caused this uh, no. incident at all? No, and I'm not uh, going to speculate. It was uh, some type of dispute uh, that led to uh, these two gentlemen, uh, one wanting to get away from the other, uh, and the other one chasing them. Officers had no choice but to fire back on the suspect firing at them, right, right? Und undoubtedly. The officer... What he describes is, on the radio, he describes a vehicle losing control and striking a tree. Before he can react, the gentleman that was in that vehicle jumped out of the car and opened fire on the officers. Your officers, they're going to be okay, no, not life-threatening. One of them, like I said, one of them is life, not life-threatening. Uh, the other one uh, is in serious guarded condition. As a precaution, uh, the medical personnel at Jackson West decided that it was uh, best that he be transferred to rider trauma, and that was the case. But uh, he's in serious but stable condition. Ray, you've been around for a long time. Miami-Dade Police, 30 years, you've been a cop a long time. You saw what happened recently with that poor officer in Hollywood. Your heart must, must have gone out when you heard this. Yeah, it's alarming. Anytime that you hear uh, that an officer's uh, been shot, uh, you have that moment of trepidation until you get all the facts, until you figure out exactly what's going on. So I will say uh, it was a touch and go for me personally uh, in light of what happened uh, earlier this week uh, with another agency in South Florida. It's just a stark reminder of the danger that our officers face uh, every day. You're not looking for a second Ray, suspect, Ray, right? Ray, right? Ray, right? Ray, right? Grazed and with shrapnel, is that the officer? We don't know if it's shrapnel. We don't know if it's part of glass. Uh, his vehicle sustained probably several shots, at least half a dozen shots to the windshield. But I was Bocero, por favor. He is the officer in serious condition, right? No, he is the officer that was graced in the face. He's in serious condition. Look, anytime you have a gunshot, it's serious, okay? Anytime you have a gunshot, uh, it's serious because you don't know the complications that may you know, the complications that may result as a result of a physical injury. Are you looking for a second suspect, Ray? No other suspects? No, at this time, no. Estamos en vivo, por favor, para un inicio. Okay, en vivo. Queremos saber con el vocero directamente Ray Valdez de la Policía del... All right, these are live pictures right now. Ray Valdez, uh, Officer Ray Valdez from the Doral Police Department. They are the one that are giving us all the information to recap exactly what he said and what happened. Officer Valdez said at 11 at 10 this morning, uh, nearby, near the area of Doral, Northwest 25th Street and 94th Avenue, uh, there was some type of dispute. One man was chasing another man in a vehicle. They were chasing each other. The officers were alerted. The officer noticed one of the vehicles losing control and slamming into a tree. When one of the vehicles approached that vehicle that had crashed into the tree, the suspect got out of the car and opened Fire. There were other officers in the area as well. They opened fire. That suspect was shot and killed on the scene. A firearm has been recovered. One of the officers, we're told, was shot in the chest, leg, and arm. That officer was wearing, thankfully, a bulletproof vest. He says that it saved him. However, he is in serious but stable condition. He initially was transported to Jackson West. However, doctors there believed as a precaution to transport him to a Ryder Trauma Center. The second officer was grazed in the cheek. They're not exactly sure if it was by glass or sharpnel. That officer was transported to Kendall Regional Medical Center with non-life-threatening injuries. And we have been told there are no other suspects. We want to go now to Joan Murray. She is live at Jackson Memorial Hospital. Joan? Yeah, I am outside Ryder Trauma Center, and I got to tell you, been here many times and for different types of incidents, disasters, but I don't think I've ever seen this many 
police vehicles, law enforcement vehicles outside Ryder Trauma Center stretching all the way down the block. You can see I count over 40 cars. Some are marked, some are unmarked Miami-Dade. Many have the priority response team logo on the Miami-Dade police vehicle. Uh, we have checked the, the front door of uh, Ryder Trauma Center there. Not too much activity going on there. Uh, the rain has just started. so. Uh, but just prior to this, a number of police officers were congregating around their police uh, vehicles, talking, looking worried, concerned. Um, anytime you have an incident like this, it is very unnerving. Um, but the police, of course, pull together. So here out side again um, you can see and uh, one of the other things we noticed uh, that turn you make in to go mm -hmm. to the emergency room northwest 18th street they have been diverting some of the emergency vehicles uh, from that area to either go in another way or perhaps be rerouted to another hospital but again um, just a very deep show of support mm -hmm. outside Ryder Trauma Center where as we've been hearing one of those officers is being treated inside after being transferred from the other hospital. Yeah, Joan, it really is incredible, these live pictures. There you see City of Miami Police, you have Doral, you have Miami Dade, just all the different police agencies are out there sticking together. As you mentioned, one of the police officers that was transported there, he was initially transported to Jackson West, according to Doral Police, he was transported with chest, leg, and arm injuries. We want to go back to Ray Valdez, live on the scene with more information. We will release a short bio. And where exactly was the crash and the shooting happened? It was on the north? The crash was directly in front of Miami-Dade Police Headquarters. Hacia el mini mall. Hacia la parte del mini mall. No, no, no. Hay un, hay un, un comercio al frente. Sí. Pero es directamente, viene siendo en la 90. He, he, they're being asked exactly where the chase began and where the accident occurred. He said it was directly across the street from Miami-Dade Police Headquarters. There is a stoplight there. There is a shopping center across headquarters. In the city, one of the busiest. And as you can imagine, there were hundreds of vehicles that were traveling. Uh, there was a, uh, a gentleman in a panel truck, in a box truck, who was uh, basically in the wrong place at the wrong time. And he was struck. Uh, he received an injury, non life threatening injury, as a result of a projectile in the leg. The officer that was shot was taken to Jackson West by uh, ambulance as opposed to. Uh, he was, uh, I believe he was, uh, was taken to Jackson West, and then I believe from there he was transferred uh, to Jackson uh, Rider Trauma. Ray, can you say how many officers were involved in the shooting, Ray? Uh, how many officers? I, I, don't know that. I don't know that at this time. Can you say, Ray, how many officers were involved in the shooting? We have several officers. We haven't uh, determined that. There's several officers that were involved in the shooting. Uh, that'll be hashed out by FDLE once they complete their investigation. I can tell you for, for sure, too. Do you know how many shots were fired? I totally have no okay. idea, nor am I going to speculate on that. But again, as you said earlier, no choice but to fire back. They were, they were definitely. Hubo no balas perdidas. Los oficiales estaban dirigiendo sus tiros a un blanco. We're being told, um, Officer Valdez had mentioned, um, this is the first time we're hearing this, that there was a gentleman who was at the wrong place at the wrong time. He was in a box truck and he was actually injured by a projectile. The reporter in Spanish asked him whether the shots were just um, pretty much going in every direction. He said, absolutely not. The officers that fired knew exactly and they had, they knew exactly what they were shooting. They had a target. I have no idea. Uh, that depends on the investigation. Some of these things wrap up in a uh, matter of hours. Some of them take half a day or more. I don't know how to speculate. That is something that FDLE needs to do their investigation. Okay, right now, Officer Valdez with Doral Police is giving us an update as to exactly what happened. He's also joined by J.C. Bermudez, the mayor of, of Doral. They're giving us all the information. You have media in both Spanish and English asking questions, so they're actually going back and forth. So bear with us as we try to...
bring you the information. Less is to JC Bermudez. We apologize right now. You are actually listening to one of the Spanish reporters who's very close to our camera, and you're hearing her in her live report. Right now, you're taking a live look at JC Bermudez, the mayor of Doral. But just for a recap, uh, earlier we heard from, just a few minutes ago, actually, from Officer Valdez with the Doral Police Department, who is heading this investigation. They will be the ones giving us all the information. To recap what he said, at 11.10 this morning nearby, there was some sort of dispute between two parties. There was a chase. One of, one of the cars was chasing the other. One of the cars was trying to get away. The officers noticed what was happening. When they saw the vehicles, one of the vehicles apparently lost control literally across the street from Miami-Dade Police Headquarters, which is on Northwest 25th Street and 94th Avenue. Less is into Bermudez right now again. Mayor, the most important thing for us is to make sure that our two officers, um, you know, are able to get back uh, to normal and our prayers go out to the family. We ask you all to please keep them in your prayers. Uh, and, uh, you know, as, as Ray said, once we're able to give you more information on the officers in particular, we will. Absolutely. That's where I'm looking to go after here, if I'm permitted to go in. Uh, one of the officers is in the trauma center, so we're going to wait to see until uh, we're able to be able to visit. Unusual incident for your city, isn't this? It's an unusual incident, but you know, all our cities are interrelated. You know, this happened right in front of Miami-Dade County Police Headquarters, which is in Doral. And, you know, we work together with not only the county, but other agencies. The reality in South Florida is that we all work together. What can start in another city can end here. Uh, this may very well have not started in Doral, but it ended up in Doral. And, uh, you know, we need, uh, you know, I, I'm very proud of our officers. In particular, again, in this, any, anybody that's been in this thoroughfare knows that this is one of the busiest thoroughfares in South Florida. We are very lucky, very lucky. Other civilians and other individuals did not suffer injuries. Amazing response by Doral PD. Absolutely. Uh, I'm always proud of the Doral Police Department, not only as mayor, but more, most importantly as a resident. I have to ask, is there any indication what would have led this suspect to shoot at the officer? What was that dispute about? Do you know this information yet? Listen, I'm not going to speculate, but I will tell you this. When you decide to shoot at someone who is trusted and charged with the safety of the community, you must be a very sick and very desperate individual. From what the officer is telling us, he crashed his vehicle, jumped out of the vehicle, and without any hesitation, opened fire on the officers. And the officers responded in kind and, and successfully. They were able to neutralize him without anyone else being seriously hurt. What kind of gun did this suspect have? You said you found a gun. Uh, we found a gun. Again, that's something that will be released later when uh, FDLE completes their investigation. You're over 10 years or however long you've been in the business. You've heard of anybody doing this right in front of a police department? Not, 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 you know. Uh... I was a major in homicide for Miami Day for six years, uh, and I handled a lot of police involved shootings. That comes to mind in front of a police station? No, I, I can't say. Not right now. No, nothing comes to recollection. Sí, como no. Bueno, primero. Eh... The mayor now speaking in Spanish to the media and um, again just recapping what Officer Valdez was saying that the suspect just jumped out of the car after he had crashed into a tree and with no hesitation jumped out of the car and opened fire to the officers. We want to go now to uh, Joan Murray who is live at Ryder Trauma Center where one of those officers was transported. Joan? And as we heard in that news conference, the officer is apparently in serious condition from what I was listening to in that news conference. I guess he was wearing a protective vest, but he did take some hits and he is being treated. He was taken to one hospital, then brought here to Ryder Trauma Center. Uh, when we last spoke, we were talking about the massive number of police officers here. A number have dispersed already. Uh, when we got here, there were probably about 40 uh, flashing lights, uh, different various police agents all the way from Miami-Dade to Doral, even Miami-Dade schools now. There's probably less than 20. And the word, as you heard in that, uh, that thankfully, as you heard in that,
that news conference, this officer is said to be in serious condition. But when you have that word go out that an officer has been shot, wounded, brought here to the hospital, it's really an all-hands-on-deck situation. And that's why you see the officers amassing here. But I think with word now that he is going to survive, Looks like he will survive in serious condition. Um, some of the uh, uh, some of that tension has dissipated, um, and so a lot of the officers now are going back to uh, their regular patrols. Uh, we have been looking at the front door of the Rider okay. Trauma Center. Have not at this point seen other officers going inside. Um, and uh, we're going to check next uh, around the emergency room, but we'll have a complete report later on. Back to you. All right, Joan, thank you. And as we've been seeing from Joan's live shot as well from Chopper 4, a lot of rain in the area. We want to go over to meteorologist Jennifer Correa with more on that. Jen. Hey, the pull up the radar. If we can pull up the radar, we are dealing with heavy rainfall, especially in Broward County. You see this blue box. I'm going to pause this loop right now and you can see this blue box here. That is where the advisory is, which which contains cities like Hollywood, Dania Beach and also uh, Fort Lauderdale. You're also seeing a couple lightning strikes and what we're dealing with is basically some heavy showers and these are trash towards the north. So they will continue to move basically away from Hollywood. Hollywood, you're starting to see some actually drying conditions, but rainfall amounts are at least close to two inches per hour. And now this updated, some of these showers are producing close to three inches per hour. So uh, that's why the NWS triggered that advisory that flood advisory again is from Hollywood even down into northeastern part of Miami-Dade County all the way up to Fort Lauderdale but look at this we are dealing with a swath of rain and all of this is going to be tracking towards the north uh, so far we're seeing rain from Coral Springs out east to Deerfield Beach and then you just if you move down south along I-95 from Deerfield Beach all the way to Fort Lauderdale you're just under some heavy rainfall Lots of lightning strikes are right now popping up over Lardale by the sea. So do be careful. Drive carefully, please. Give yourself time. Give yourself patience as well as you continue to, uh, if you're going to be heading out the door and you are driving, continuing to drive with this rain. Now, this rain is moving towards parts of uh, Broward. It's moving towards northern Broward along the east coast as well. And again, everything is tracking northward. So eventually, this is all going to go into parts of Palm Beach County. Now, I do want to move down into Southern Dade. We're seeing some heavy downpours developing, but these are still over the 18-mile stretch over Florida City, near Florida City. So, Florida City, you're about to get some rain. Going to put this loop in motion. It's tracking a little slower, but it's headed your way into the Homestead area as well. These are not too concerning as far as flooding goes. We're just going to move along northward over Miami-Dade County. Let's go and zoom into the Doral area. Area, and you can see that only maybe some light drizzles are popping up. We had rain earlier, but thankfully right now the rain in Doral is not happening as, of course, uh, we have the breaking news by the Miami-Dade headquarters and that we have lots of traffic because of the block streets. So if we had rain, that would, of course, make things worse out there as far as the commute goes for the lunch hour. Let's zoom into Liberty City, Little Haiti, El Portal, and Miami Shores, we are seeing rain developing right over I-95. Now, I'm going to move this northward again. This is right over northeast Miami-Dade. It looks like the rain has ended for North Miami, but over Sunny Isles and Golden Beach, we are dealing with another round of heavy rain. So I mentioned before how Hallandale Beach and Hollywood is starting to see the rain taper off. Now, this area is actually uh, under that flood advisory. And again, that flood advisory is in effect uh, till at least 2.30 this afternoon. The flood advisory extends northward into Fort Lauderdale. I think we're going to see better conditions uh, through the rest of the afternoon for these areas. Eventually, once we can get all this rain moving away to the north uh, towards Palm Beach County. And what we're going to continue to track throughout the second half of the afternoon 
afternoon is possibly another round of thunderstorms. And I'm going to pass it back to Maribel, uh, who's uh, going to continue us with the breaking news coverage. All right, Jen, thank you. Thank you so much for that very specific forecast. Now we want to head over to Michael Solier for more on the traffic situation in Doral. Michael? Maribel, thanks. Uh, you know, Northwest 25th Street, usually a pretty busy stretch of road throughout Doral. So the weather right now, those wet roads, certainly not helping ease the conditions as drivers are being detoured away from the shooting scene that we've been talking about all afternoon now. That's Miami-Dade PDHQ along 25th Street at Northwest 92nd Avenue. That road is closed between 97th and about 82nd Avenue. This is just to the west of the Palmetto, west of Miami International Airport. Your best workarounds right now are going to be Northwest 36th Street and Northwest 12th Street. A lot of the smaller streets in the area here also closed off a whole lot of delays in the area. If you're coming west from MIA, there's a flyover ramp that goes over the Palmetto. That ramp right now is also shut down. They're forcing drivers away from 25th Street. Your best workaround if you're heading west from that area, head north or south along 82nd Avenue. Again, expect a lot of delays. The good news right now, though, is traffic along the Palmetto and the Dolphin not being impacted just at the moment. Maribel, back to you. All right, Michael, thank you so much. We want to check back in with uh, Jim DeFeedy now. Jim, you're with us? I am. So, Jim, we got some more information from the Doral Police Department. Um, Officer Valdez did, seemed very, very upset speaking about what happened and also mentioning that the suspect jumped out of the car, no hesitation, and just opened fire on the officers. Uh, which raises an interesting mm -hmm. question as to why he would do that uh, because. Uh, you know, that's going to be one of the first things that uh, that uh, police will try to, to do is uh, let's assume that he's got ID on him, he's got a driver's license on him. You know, they're going to do a complete check on him. Was he wanted somewhere? I mean, that type of behavior is not normal to emerge from a car from a traffic accident and begin shooting. You know, as you saw in the case in Hollywood, that was an incident where that individual was afraid of being sent back to jail. And that's why he did the crazy thing that he did in terms of shooting and killing, or allegedly shooting and killing an officer. So uh, the question is going to be, what was it in this person's background that prompted them to take such dramatic action uh, that ultimately cost him his own life? You know, you can go to jail or you can die. Um, you know, he probably should have uh, opted for going to jail. And all this happening across the street from Miami-Dade Police Headquarters. Yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure that uh, that wasn't his plan right. to get into an accident and a shootout across from Miami Day PD headquarters. He may not have even been aware that Miami Day PD headquarters was there. This was just this was just sort of what what Random, occurred yeah. as as a traffic uh, as our traffic person just noted. 25th Street is a is a major thoroughfare through through tw uh, through uh, Doral, and so and so yeah. But these things happen where they happen. Uh, they could happen anywhere. They can happen in quiet neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. They can happen. On busy roadways, that's the that's the nature of of life in South Florida, and truly yeah. life almost anywhere these days, where gun violence is far too prevalent. Yeah, absolutely. Because you mentioned that this all started, uh, it was a dispute. Uh, two men, two vehicles, one was chasing the other, and the officers noticed what was happening. One of the officers lost control, crashed into the tree, and that's when the suspect came out of the car and just sh started shooting. He also mentioned there were several police officers that were there as well that opened fire. So we're talking about several police officers yeah, now. He, yeah. he, he he said at least two. Mm -hmm. That's going to be one of the first questions that are going to be asked of everyone is which officers discharge their weapons. You know, it's, it, these, these shootings take a, sort of a, a very interesting pattern. The officers tend not to give formal statements at this point. They simply have to acknowledge whether or not they discharge their firearms. In fact, all of the firearms will be collected and they would be able to determine if with their gun had been discharged. And so those guns will be taken. One of the questions that they're going to want to ask is, you know, try to account for every bullet that was fired where it ended up. It's a laborious process. So not just the bullets fired from the suspect to the towards the officers, but the officers firing, you know, returning fire or firing at the suspect. We saw that with the uh, with the hijacking that ended in in Broward of the of the UPS truck. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's been a lot of detail trying to be recreated in terms of where those bullets went. 
That's going to be one of the questions here. We learned in that press conference that there was a person in a box truck mm -hmm. who was hit by a projectile. I'm not 100% clear what a projectile is. I assume that it means he was hit by a bullet. Yeah. And the question is going to naturally be whose bullet was it? Was it uh, a bullet fired by the suspect? Was it uh, a bullet fired by one of the officers? Uh, and so all of that has to be, you know, dealt with in painstaking detail. They will trade. That's why this scene will likely be closed off for a very long time. It's also why earlier you were asking Peter about why such a large area right. was was blocked off, creating that that large box. One, that they, they want to be able to control a scene because bullets can travel. Bullets can travel a long distance, and they need to control the entire area so they can follow whatever pathway there may have been and try to track down every bullet that was discharged, no matter who discharged it. Right, and one of the questions that I asked Peter, exactly that question, why such a large perimeter, I guess, if you would call it. Um, but the uh, Dural police said that there is no other suspect. So obviously it's for the investigation purpose. Um, also, you know, when I look at the scene and what happened, this was at 11:10 this morning on Northwest 25th Street, and I and I mention it because this is very close to our station. We drive by there all the time. It's very busy road. There's a shopping center across the street. There's a restaurant across the street. People stand outside. People have coffee, and then no one else was injured. Just that other innocent bystander who happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. This could have been so much worse. I've had coffee mm -hmm. at that at that little shop yeah. across from from uh, Miami Dade PD, and I will tell you that it's a rarity that there. I I, I have find it hard to believe that there weren't three or four yeah. or five or six police officers just over there having coffee at the time. I mean, it's going to be when we reconstruct the scene. That's going to be one of the things I'm going to be curious about is not just the Doral officers who responded, but how close by were were actual Miami Dade police officers. And again, you know, you talk about who the police are going to want to want to question yes there is no second suspect that they're looking for but it's not clear to me and I didn't hear it in the press conference I don't know if 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 you heard it in any of the questioning whether or not the person who this this individual was in some sort of argument with chasing back and forth with cars so that started again what described to me as a road rage incident mm -hmm. you know whether or not that second vehicle the driver of the second vehicle stopped and has been questioned and is and and is talking to police because that would fill in mm -hmm. a lot of details that the police will want to have exactly as to where this started, what transpired, how it escalated, and how it resulted in crash into the tree and then the shooting with the officers. Absolutely. Hopefully that person, if they haven't spoken with him already, that that person will definitely come forward to answer a lot of questions for them. Jen, stick around with us. We want to go back out live now to Peter Dench, who's live on the scene. Peter? Well, Maribel, as Jim mentioned, uh, we expect this scene to be uh, contained for at least several hours as the rain is now starting to come down here in Doral. Scene uh, uh, on Northwest 25th Street, uh, uh, shut down between 97th and 87th Avenues here. Uh, as Jim mentioned, that's one of the unanswered questions, uh, the status of that other person at this point. Uh, but again, uh, looking for no other suspects, uh, Officer Ray Valdez, a veteran uh, um, officer with Miami Dade for more than 30 years, talking along with the mayor of Doral, saying their hearts go out to the officers who had no choice but to fire back. They could not say uh, how many shots were fired. Uh, the mayor told me he would be visiting uh, the officers at the hospital at this point. So uh, that's the situation. The area is still contained by police and the massive presence of Miami Day Police, Sweetwater, Doral, and the Florida Highway Patrol as they look at the situation. Uh, fortunately, injuries were not life threatening. It could have been much worse. And so uh, that's the situation here on Northwest 25th Street as they mm -hmm. look for more evidence and information about exactly what happened here, Maribel. All right, Peter, thank you so much for your live report. We want to head over now back with uh, Jim DeFeedy. Jim, you there?
Yeah, just a quick point just to pick up on. It's not only that they're going to want to talk, the police will not only want to talk to the, the second individual driving the second car, I'm sure that, they, that, that wherever this began and how it transpired, they, probably a lot of people saw it. A lot of people were on the road. If anyone has that type of information, if anyone saw two cars jockeying back and forth, you know, and, and has that type of, you know, drove by the scene as all this was developing, I'm sure the Miami-Dade police and, and particularly the Doral police and the Florida Department of Law Enforcement will want to hear from them. So, you know, the good thing to do would be to try to reach out and contact Doral police and let them know what element you saw, because you never know if one small aspect that you saw could be critical in their understanding of the investigation. Absolutely. And they said uh, they haven't said exactly where the incident began because they're not exactly sure, but they definitely did say that it was nearby because they saw the officers, they saw, excuse me, the two, um, the two vehicles that were involved chasing each other and ending here. Jim, stay with us for a moment. We want to head over to Ryder Trauma Center. That's where Joan Murray's at. Joan? And Maribel, as we told you, when we first got here, a sea of police officers from various agencies Many of them have left. Now we see just maybe about a half a dozen cars in front of the main ER entrance. And I don't know whether my photographer can push in, but uh, we do see it looks like um, a handful of Miami Dade police officers gathered outside the ER. There is an emergency vehicle parked in front of them, but they appear to be talking. As we have been reporting, uh, the officer that was brought here, brought here from another hospital, he appears to be in serious condition. He was hit a couple of times, but according to what we heard at the news conference, he was wearing a protective vest, and quite likely that saved his life. So he is being treated there. Um, you see a couple of officers walking out now. Um, it, it certainly is a great relief mm -hmm. that at this point it appears this officer is going to survive. Joan, what can you tell us about that officer? We know, thankfully, that officer was wearing his bulletproof vest. However, he is in serious but stable condition, we're told. Well, as you heard, I think what I heard in the news conference listening was mm -hmm. I think he took some bullets to the arm and the torso, um, and they said he was first taken to the other hospital, uh, a, a lower level hospital, and they determined there that just to be on the safe side to bring him here to Ryder Trauma Center, which of course is a trauma center and uh, equipped for the, to handle the most serious of injuries. Um, we do not know at this point exactly where he is in the process in the treatment process but as you heard well, we are told he is in serious condition and it seemed to me as soon as they announced he was in serious condition and they used a term of non-life-threatening injuries that is when the officers here uh, began to disperse and go back to their normal patrols. All right, Joan, thank you so much for that live report. Now to recap exactly what's been happening this morning. Very chaotic scene in Doral. At 11.10 this morning, according to Doral police, nearby there was a dispute, two vehicles, there was a dispute between two vehicles. They were chasing each other. One of the vehicles lost control. One of the Doral police officers noticed that vehicle losing control, crashing into a tree. We're told the suspect jumped out of the car and began firing at the police officers. There were several other police officers who were in the area and fired back. The suspect was shot dead on the scene from the officers returning fire. There were two Dura police officers who were shot. One was shot in the chest, the leg and the arm. Fortunately, that officer was wearing a bulletproof vest. Initially, the officer was transported to Jackson West. However, doctors believe that as a precaution, be transported to Ryder Trauma Center. That officer is in serious but stable condition. The second Doral officer was grazed in the cheek, possibly by glass or sharpnel. That officer was taken to Kendall Regional Medical Center with non-life-threatening injuries. There are no other suspects they are looking for. However, we were told that there was a box truck driver who was at the wrong place at the wrong time. That driver was struck with some projectile there on the scene on Northwest 25th Street and 94th Avenue. So a very large presence in Doral. We, of course, will be following this story all day long and have more information on our website, cbsmiami.com, as well as we'll be breaking into programming if we have more information. See you then.